Hi, this is John Takis, writer and album producer, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. You really are a glutton for punishment. Time and again I've beaten you, humbled you. What makes you think today's outcome will be any different? Because this time, I won't stop until you're just a greasy smear on my fist. Let's go. Hello and welcome to GeekCast Radio. This is yet again another interview. I am your host, TF2 and Mike, and um, joining me almost, I think it's almost a year or so since the last time. I'll have to look this up. Actually, I just had it up on, on GeekCastRadio.com. Um, I believe it's been almost a full year since I interviewed Neil S. Bulk one of the album producers who works on uh, multiple label records. Oh, no. Actually, Neil was <laughs> five months ago. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, I don't know time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Neil S. Bulk, uh, he has worked with uh, La La Land Records and other companies, and we talked about Lethal Weapon. This interview I'm talking to, uh, you'll have to make sure... <sighs> I... I want to make sure I get your name right. It is John Takis or Takis? Uh, Takis is how we've, we've said it. I, okay. I respond to pretty much anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Mr. John Takis is here with us. He is a album producer who has worked on many, many different projects. Um, a couple of the biggest ones right now that most people will know is the Superman the Animated Series Volume 1 4 disc set from La La Land Records. Uh, you also, did you work on Batman the Animated Series Volume 2? I did. Uh, I, was, I wrote the liner notes for that project and um, I, I did a little informal consulting, but I was not a, a producer on that album. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, he has recently just released this past month from Lala Land Records, uh, Batman the Animated Series Volume 3, which you did do the liner notes for that. Yep. Uh, other projects that people will know him from, uh, Star Trek Generations, uh, score. Interesting. Mm -hmm. With Jeff very, Bond. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Um, let's see, what else will people recognize you from, uh, Star Trek Insurrection? I did several of the Star Trek ones, uh, with Jeff Bond, um, mm -hmm. who, who mainly worked on the, the booklet notes while I did, uh, track by track analyses for the, uh, for the website. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you also worked on, uh, Batman Brave and the Bold's, uh, soundtrack release as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Willard, Willard, Please. Willard, a great one. Shirley Walker, one of her finest ah. film scores. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, yes, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have John on is because uh, when <laughs> when the Superman the Animated Series set released, I nearly fell over, <laughs> 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 fell out of my chair looking at that track list because oh. Like, uh, one of the things with La La Land Records and their DC Animated Universe, um, I guess, contracts or whatever that they have set up with Warner Brothers to get these things onto disc, I'm always wondering what scores they're going to put on which releases. And um, a few weeks ago, I had talked with, actually, uh, M.V. Gerhard and Matt Verboys, mm -hmm. the co-founders of La La Land Records, yep. and... We talked about, you know, Batman Beyond and Justice League and more, you know, Batman the Animated Series and how they're going to be going through and getting the stuff gradually on. Like, right now, what I am most anxious for is Over the Edge and Old Wounds from Batman the Animated Series. I need those scores <laughs> on a disc. Yes. Well, those, especially Old Wounds. Those are fantastic scores. I, I've, I've, uh, I've watched those quite recently. And um, those ones are from the, the new Batman adventures, which is when they yeah. revamped the show while Superman was on the air. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the agenda. <laughs> um, so Batman the Enemy Series Volume 3 just released, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, about, a, about a month ago or so. Um, well, Less than a month. Th yeah. Yeah, it's, it's about, 20, about three 21 weeks. days. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, it features uh, scores from Eternal Youth, Prophecy of Doom, Day of the Samurai, Night of the Ninja. Um, 
a whole heck of a lot of Tw- awesome music. 24 full episodes, yeah. Yes. Now, that's always interesting to me, how many episodes you guys can get on, whether it's a two-disc or a four-disc. And I noticed that um, with you guys working with La La Land, they tend to, at this point, go with, especially for the archival stuff, they go with the four-disc or the multi-disc instead of just usually the two-disc sets. Yeah, well, I mean, MV and Matt, uh, they're big supporters of this music, um, and uh they've they've been very you know generous in pro- in in producing these these very generous length sets um which is wonderful because it means that we can really spotlight these scores in their fullness um each one you know kind of developed as 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 its own kind of mini film score um and so we've we've been able to to put out a lot of stuff that we wouldn't have been able to do in the context of you know a compilation album um now there are shows where where the uh uh like you know young justice um where it's less you know broken down by episodes um Mm -hmm. but uh you know it's just it's the needs of the particular project and the style of scoring uh and for these batman and and superman shows they really were conceived as these these mini movies and uh and so thanks to the again the generous nature of these sets we've i think really been able to reflect and honor that i mean yeah at this point batman the animated series has 10 total discs released yeah it 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 blows my mind Uh, it really does (laughs) Um, you know, I, this, the show came on the air when I was 12. Uh, I can't say that I was, you know, there on day one watching the very first episode. Batman wasn't much on my radar. This is kind of the show that put it on my radar, but I would catch it on, you know, coming home after Mm -hmm. school and I was hooked very quickly. And my first exercise in soundtrack frustration, uh, was going to the local uh, Harmony House. Uh, people who are old enough will remember that establishment. <laughs> uh, and saying, well, you know, I, I, I want the Batman the Animated Series soundtrack. I don't see it on the shelf. Can you order it for me? And, uh, and you know, it, it took the clerk uh, some time to convince me that no such thing existed. Um, and so that was kind of my, my first experience with crushing disappointment. Um, so the idea now that, you know, we, there's so much out and, and more to come even, you know, from these shows. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's quite surreal to be working on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's got to be such a dream. And especially now with this third set for Batman, you've got, you know, I rattled off some of the episode titles earlier a second ago. You got stuff like POV, The Clock King, mm-hmm. Robin's Reckoning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got so like one the one score on this set that I have been dying for since 1994 is the forgotten. Mm, Yeah. It's the, um, uh, it's the dream sequence. It is the sweat box breakout trapped in the Canyon. Those, the, I, I think it's the sweat box breakout and trapped in the Canyon. Those, that track is that really, really Western feel kind of music? Yeah, it's it's get that dun dun. You know, uh, you got the just, har- the harmonica, you got the steel guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 a really interesting uh, score, and and it really shows the the show's range. There's no other score like that in the entire series that combines those particular elements. Um, it's almost got a throwback vibe to it. You know, like mm-hmm. in the '70s uh, action shows. Um, but there's also just some gorgeous writing in there. And the, you're right. Yeah, the, the, the moment where he recovers his identity and he has that little sequence and, uh, and you see, you know, his parents throw him up into the air and then he doesn't come down. And then there's the, the tombstone. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, Shirley could take an episode that had disparate elements like that and combine them into this wonderful functioning whole um, in ways that you just wouldn't expect, but that are so, uh, you know, wonderful to, to be able to, to listen to. And that's a score that, that wouldn't necessarily, you know, have been fast tracked for volumes one or two, because it doesn't have a major villain. Um, it's, you know, it's not like regarded as an all time classic of the, the bat literature as it were. Um, but the music is just phenomenal and it's such a pleasure to be able to put it out there at last. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so, give my give our listeners a little bit of background on yourself. How did you get into becoming an album producer? Was it that love of of soundtracks and scores as a child that you know 
Because most kids, most of us as, you know, 9, 10, 11 year old kids say, I want to be a police officer. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be, you know, a doctor or whatever. So how did you end <laughs> up becoming the album producer to the stars? Well, uh, my album production experience, I should note, is 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 relatively limited. I, I've done a lot more writing than I have producing. Um, mm-hmm. And while I can't say that I, I wanted, you know, specifically, you know, to do that, I mean, um, I always wanted to be a writer. And uh, I remember getting some of those early, you know, soundtrack albums back back when expanded soundtracks were just starting to become a thing, you know, in the 90s. Um, I remember, you know, the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, expansion that came out and it had uh, uh, liner notes by Lucas Kendall, who was, you know, doing Film School Monthly at the time. And uh, he did a track by track analysis in there. And I remember the Star Wars Special Edition trilogy, uh, Mm -hmm. which had wonderful notes by Mike Mattacino. And so at the time, you know, I was just a teenager in in Michigan and, you know, all this stuff is happening very far away. And so you don't think that, oh, well, that, that would be me someday. But it did get me writing about film music specifically, which had been a passion of mine since a very young child. Uh, so film music and writing kind of came naturally. And I uh, discovered just out, of, just out of high school, I think I, I discovered Film Score Monthly. And I sent something in about, uh, it was about Jaws. I sent it into their letters column and Lucas Kendall said, hey, how'd you like to do some reviews for the magazine? So I kind of cut my teeth doing that. And, you know, it's like many things. You meet people, you form relationships, and, uh, you know, eventually someone asks you to do something. So uh, Joseph Koryak, who was the art director for Film Score Monthly, um, was also, you know, did a lot of work for the record labels. He was working for Entrada, and he said, you know, we're, we're going to be releasing more CDs more frequently. Um, How do you like to write? You know, we'll give you a shot, see how it works. Um and it just kind of went from there. Um, with with uh, with La La Land Records, I uh, I came in because uh, Neil Bulk suggested me on a project, uh, which was uh, Batman Returns, which is my favorite live action Batman score, by the way, Danny Elfman, uh, Batman Returns. And so I started working for that label. Um, and MV and Matt, you know, M- MV knew uh, knew what a passionate fan I was of uh, Batman the Animated Series and Shirley Walker. And he invited me to uh, write the notes for volume two. And, you know, he'd ask, you know, we, we'd talk about it. Um, I'd send, you know, information and, and my research and stuff. And, you know, I was able to pretty much answer any question that they could have come up with. So he said, would you like to produce, be a co-producer with Neil on Superman and Batman? And, of course, how can you turn that down? <laughs> so, um, but it's been, it's been a real pleasure. You know, every, everyone there is uh, at the label is great and has been very supportive and uh, just really interested in making these the best releases that they can possibly be. What had you more excited, the Batman releases or the Superman release? Well, it's funny you should ask. Um, back... I, I can only put this, I suppose, through the perspective of of what uh, of what I was thinking back before any of this happened, right? Mm-hmm. So before any of this happened, um, I think at the time I was on a real Superman kick, mm-hmm. and uh, while I would say my first allegiance was to Batman and all that stuff, at least with Batman we had something. We had an album for Mask of the Phantasm that had, you know, it had the the Shirley's Batman theme on it. It had the Joker's theme on it uh, as something representative of the series and all of its breadth and majesty. You know, it was woefully inadequate, Um, but uh, it was something. Whereas with Superman, we had nothing. We had absolutely nothing. Uh, this in spite of the fact, if you go back actually and you look at old VHS tapes of that World's Finest three-parter, mm-hmm. uh, it, says, mm-hmm. it says in the fine print on the back, it says, soundtrack available. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I, I, I took that as a promise you know, and tried to find it. But of course, it was just boilerplate. Someone had made a mistake. There was no soundtrack available. Um, I got to interview Shirley Walker in 2006, just a, a few months before she died. And we were taught we got to talking about you know some of my favorite stuff um and at the time i think what i wanted most of all more than anything because remember this none of this had come out i wasn't thinking about uh multi-disc sets or anything like that i was thinking about mm. something i want something and uh the the number one on my list was that two-part 
uh, legacy episode, the finale of <laughs> Superman, um, mm-hmm. which was just, I think, the pinnacle of Shirley's work on that series. Um, you know, it, it came, uh, it, it was just an all-time high for me. So I think probably that had me more excited than anything else. Um, but of course, at the time that we wound up producing Superman at that time, we had already, we'd had, you know, two volumes of Batman, the animated series. So there again, you know, um, it was easy to be the most excited about that. But Batman really was my first love and, and where uh, I think most of my, my fan energy uh, lies. But I love them both. They're both phenomenally great series. And, uh, and, and the Superman set in particular, I, I'm really proud of how that turned out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great. It really, really is. Um, I don't know how you guys can get... I mean, this is 20 full episodes out of, what, 52? Uh, is it 50, 54, 50, 54, 54? 54, 54. Yeah, 54. Um, so this is 20 full episodes mm-hmm. out of 54. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to get the other 34 onto one... <laughs> One but, more volume. Well, the answer is is that we wouldn't if uh, if there was only one more volume, unless we wanted to to start you know chopping up the scores. And in that case, we'd have to make some pretty severe cuts to get all thirty four into four mm-hmm. discs. Superman had longer, uh, uh, typically had had longer scores than the Batman scores. Right. Um, yeah. Just I don't know if it was because there was more action or 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 less you know spaces for brooding silence <laughs> yeah superman's really not a brooder he's more of a man of action he's more of a man it's a little bit of brooding but but not uh it, it's it's a show that's much more about light and color and, and action um you know he batman created space for silence uh the bat cave you know commissioner gordon's the office there are locations that um not uniformly, but most of the time, you know, it's the quiet, reflective sound design, you know. So the, the scores for Batman tended to be a little bit shorter than Superman. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed looking through some of my playlists and looking through, uh, you know, like, um, like you know, start of Volume 3 with Robin's Reckoning. Um, the, boy, the track 3, the Boy Wonder track, is only 57 seconds. But it's 57 seconds of awesomeness. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's the thing. It's, 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 um, there are shorter tracks, you know, on these sets too. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just a question of how it flows. You know, it, it, for me, it was important to present the material, uh, as complete as possible and as chronological as possible, just because the way that the music develops and evolves over the course of the episode, you know, it's, it's, it's very carefully done. They didn't have a lot of time to waste in these shows. You know, they're only, you know, 21, 20, uh, 21 minutes, uh, of, of episode that can be scored, you know? So, um, every, every second kind of counts. Um, and And if you take out the minute and a half or two and a half minutes, that is the, opening theme and closing theme you have even shorter time yeah yeah so i mean there there's not a lot of filler in these episodes the the music no. always counted um surely and part of that is surely she was always involved with the spotting sessions you know determining where there should be music and where there there wouldn't and she just had great instincts great dramatic instincts for uh for when when to bring in the music and and when it would play better without yeah, I, I remember listening to the Superman set, and it always kind of worries me when I don't hear anything, when I know something is supposed to be playing. And there's a track somewhere, I don't know, I'd have to go back and look and find it, you might know where it is, but there's a track where, on the Superman set, where it's her and Bruce Tim talking at the end of a queue. And she's talking about how Bruce and the WB guys wanted, you know, full scores, no, you know, no inserting just regular old music. They wanted composition and everything else. And I heard that and I was like, wow, I can't believe they included that on this. Cause I wouldn't explain like, music of the bat one on one in the first volume. It's like, I wouldn't think a track like that would be on there. You know, it, it, anytime we find little things like that, 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 illuminate the creative process the behind the scenes stuff you know we they're just it's little easter eggs you know right. um it's it's uh 
I mean, some of the stuff, some of the demo stuff is more substantial than that, because it really is, as in Music of the Bat, you know, literally Shirley Walker sits down and explains, you know, the creative process of how this, this theme, you know, evolves and interacts with uh, with the material around it. Um, so that's that can be very, very illuminating. Um, and then some of the stuff, you know, we, we just throw on there as an Easter egg because it's fun. Um, and it all, you know, we want to convey a little bit something of the spirit of the people who are working on this, you know, this, the, 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 these, these were, these were professionals, uh, but they loved what they did and they had a good time doing it. Um, and so, you know, it, it's good to, it's good to convey that. Absolutely. Um, so as a producer, walk us through, walk the listeners through kind of what the, the process is for you and what you have to do to get, something like Superman or something like Batman volume three out to us as, as listeners. Well, it, it's, it starts above my level. You know, it starts where, where MV or Matt say, okay, this is going to be the release. This is going to be the scope of the release. Mm -hmm. Um, in the case of, uh, of, of Batman and Superman, you know, they, we, we may come down from the beginning and say, okay, we're going to include, you know, a, B and C. And then the rest has to kind of be put together. So um, it involves me kind of going back and and uh, you know making a lot of notes and trying out a lot of combinations. Um, I I try and you know figure out how much music is in each episode, how the episodes are going to play together on a disc. You know how to which episodes you're going to pick for this set, um, how to arrange them so that it's a satisfying you know listening experience for people who just want to pop in their CD and hit play. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of kind of logistical figuring things out. Um, and then uh, my co-producer, Neil S. Bolt, over in L.A., um, is tasked with kind of uh, uh, actually obtaining the material, transferring the tapes, um, getting everything ready to be mastered. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I have to sit down and and we we figure out um, how the how the tracks are going to be sequenced. You know which cues are you going to combine? Uh, how are you going to combine them? Um, so again, more logistical stuff. Um, you have to make sure that everything you want on the disc is going to fit on the disc. Um, where you're going to put the bonus tracks? Um, and actually getting the materials. You know sometimes uh, the composers have you know DATs handy. Um, some things we get from the studio, uh, once in a while things, you know, we have to hunt for things, um, that aren't immediately apparent. Um, but, uh, once we have everything, once we figure it out exactly how it's going to go, then it, you know, it goes off to get mastered. I've got to write the notes, um, or, you know, someone, if it was a, a release I was not writing for, would have to write the notes. Mm -hmm. um, you get it to the art director. On, on Superman, we had uh, uh, Jim Titus, um, Batman, the animated series, Volume 3, uh, Dan Goldwasser. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a long process of choosing the images, and you, you got to review the text. you got to make sure that that uh, it's as error-free as, you know, you, you can reasonably make it. Um, I'll correct whatever typos you catch. Um, and then everything needs to get submitted uh, to the studio for their approval. So you know it's it's a it's a pretty involved process, but uh, you know the, everyone involved over there is is old pros at it by this time. So oh yeah, absolutely. Um, what uh, what is one episode that has yet to be? release that you are hoping for at this point well at this the the number one thing because th this goes back to that like i said that original conversation with shirley walker mm -hmm. um and uh you know she 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 um she and i were, t were talking about you know what what some of my favorite things were uh that she'd worked on that she'd uh, been able to do um and there was superman legacy like i said and then i i came up with i think with you know, I, I, I sent little little fan letters, mini fan letters of praise for like my top five episodes um, from Batman the Animated Series and the spinoffs there. And four of those have already been released. Um, the the last one that hasn't been released yet because it's part of the Adventures of Batman and Robin block mm -hmm. is uh, Harlequinade. <laughs> Harlequinade was probably is, is way up there in my all time favorite series scores. Um so of the ones that have yet to be released, I would say that's uh, that's tops on my list. Awesome, awesome. 
What, um, as far as other projects you have going on, what else are you working on at this point in time? Oh, I couldn't say. <laughs> oh, come on. I really can't. Um, you know, if you're talking to a label head, they can come out and say, oh, yeah, we're, we're working on this, we're working on that. I'm a, a little bit further down on the totem pole, so it's, <laughs> it's not for me to give anything away. I can tell you that, you know, we are working on more DC animated stuff. Um, you know, it's there's more great stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I did uh, the notes for the last Starfighter for Entrada. That's one that's not a secret. That's that's coming out very soon, just as soon as I think the studio artwork approvals come through. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can talk about. There's not a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Uh, you're also you. You know, you said you grew up wanting to be a writer, and you you are also a writer. What? Um, you know, looking at your website here, you've um, written some otherworldly type stories. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done a little a little speculative fiction, um, mostly playing in other people's sandboxes, like. Uh, uh, the, the, some of the, the, the Star Trek Strange New Worlds anthologies from Pocket Books. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a story in a Professor Challenger anthology coming out next year. So yeah, I, I've, I've dabbled in, in fiction. And also a little bit of nonfiction outside the film music world. I, I did a historical article for a local Michigan magazine a while back. Um, but most of what I write these days, you know, most of the energy goes into uh, a liner notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's so nice. Uh, you know, La La Land specifically, because those are the people that I deal with. I mean, I bought the Transformers the movie score from Vince DiCola from Entrada. I got that from mm -hmm. them. But like La La Land Records, they are, in my personal opinion, the premier soundtrack and score company at this point. Um, and they're still, still putting discs out, you know, in, in an age where... You'd think, oh, well, it'd be much easier to just let people, you know, have a digital version of it. Well, you know, yeah. it's not exactly the same feeling. No, no. And I, I think that, well, I think the great thing about working, you know, because I, I do a lot of work for Entrada. Um, I, I do a lot of work for La La Land. It, it is very interesting because, you know, the labels have different uh, focuses and, and different um uh, you know, areas where they concentrate their energy, mm -hmm. they have different styles. But I, I think, I think it, it, I, I personally could not, you know, say, oh, well, you know, this one's the best, that one's the best. Just, right, just, right. just because again, they're, they're so kind of different in their philosophy and, 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 mm -hmm. uh, but, um, and, and, and there's some overlap, obviously, but, you know, you, you've got La La Land doing, you know, the, the DC animated stuff, um, uh, in in Trada put out those wonderful uh, you know Battlestar Galactica and uh, Buck Rogers sets, which which was my you know great pleasure to work on those. Um, so we're we're just we're very fortunate, I think, that that the market is the way it is, and that we're getting you know more stuff now than we've ever gotten in the past. There's so many holy grails, so many dream projects. Um, uh, gosh, Entrada just put out, you know, young Sherlock Holmes finally made it to the finish line this year. Right, right. And, you know, how long have we been wanting that? So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, all right. Uh, what other, um, I'm trying to think, what other soundtracks, whether they be television or, or film or what other ones would you expect to no, that's... <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to word this without asking like <laughs> obviously the question I already asked it, it, it's um, it's probably dangerous even for me to speculate yeah, because you know pe yeah. people may read my my speculations into into coy hints at something that's yet to come um yes. it's it's uh yeah, I mean, I. All right, all right. I'll I'll, I'll I'll ask the question this way. This is much easier. What project, whether it be animation, television, film, video game, whatever, what soundtrack project that has never had a soundtrack release would you want the most 
in the future. Of any kind. Any kind. Anything. That is, but that, that has never been released. Oh goodness gracious! That's a tough one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, gosh, it's it, it's it's because so many, of course, so many of the great ones have been released in some shape or form, in some way. Um, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. There, there's. I can think of some recent things that that haven't come out yet that I would like to see. Um, I would like to see. Uh, uh, there's a British mystery show called Father Brown that, that has some uh, some very good music, um, and that's uh, I believe by uh, Debbie Wiseman. Yeah, Debbie Wiseman. Um, Who's just, she's done some great work on that show. Um, there's, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll look forward to Bear McCreary's uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, when and if that happens. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. That's one I wasn't expecting. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I can tell you that um, my, probably my dream soundtrack project, and I don't know how likely this is to happen, uh, I would love someday for someone to do a really definitive re-recording of Miklos Roja's music for the Jungle Book, the 19, uh, I think 1942 version. I think it's 42. It's 1940s anyway. Um, the the original tracks that were rescued by the uh, Film Music Society are are very degraded and incomplete, um, and and very archival in nature, not really for listening pleasure. And there's an excellent concert suite. Um, but the concert suite too is is very incomplete compared to the film score. There are dimensions of that score, and that's the score that really got me into film music. You know, thinking about film music, um, and there are certainly enough Roja recordings going around. Um, yeah, I suppose it's possible that it could happen someday. But really, that's that's kind of a, a dream project at the moment. And and Lawrence Rosenthal too has. There's still a lot of his works that need to be released. Um, some really good stuff. Um, Shirley Walker, of course. Um, sure, like there, her, final, her. her final destination scores. And then there's a score she did for Disney, The Love Bug, a TV movie. Very obscure. I'm sure not many people have heard of it. But it's a fantastic score. She wrote one of the best bad guy themes in her entire career for an evil car. You know, <laughs> an evil version of Herbie. So, um, yeah, those, those, are, those are some of the things I would, I would like to see happen uh, that I don't know if they will. Uh, you were asking what it was like. Well, yeah. What was it like? I mean, I mean, you were, you know, you're like me. You grew up watching these shows. Yeah. And you grew. I, I'm sure I knew her name at some point, or you know, you see the names in the credits. You might not know who exactly it is, but you know what I mean. So, what was it like, just sitting down and talking with her? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, the thing is. Again, I, I had been an admirer of her for such a long time. At the time I interviewed her in 2006, I had not done a lot of I, – I hadn't really done any high, what I'd call high-profile interviews. Um, and the whole experience of interviewing someone was, was still pretty new and intimidating to me. Um, and so I kind of put it off for a long time, uh, and partly because it, it, you know there, there, she wasn't uh, doing any big stuff with the superhero – uh, stuff for a while uh, after after Superman and Batman Beyond. Um, and so, you know, I, I was kind of had wanted to have a good good hook, and ultimately I decided, well, let's just do it. Um, my friend uh, Doug Adams, who uh, is, a, is also, um, he's the author of the music of the Lord of the Rings films. Um, he's an associate of Howard Shore. Um, he had interviewed Shirley a few years back and he said well you know you, you really ought to do it you know he, he kind of prodded me into it um and said yeah there's there's no reason to wait any longer it'll be fine she's you know she's great great to talk to um so we set it up and she was you know more than happy to speak to me and she was just an extraordinarily kind and funny and generous um you know she put me right at my ease and uh it meant a lot you know, because I had always loved her work. I had always felt and still do that, you know, that, that she did not, has not gotten enough credit. Um, 
for for what an extraordinary uh, person she was and an extraordinary composer she was, just at one of the all time greats. Um, and it, it meant an awful lot. It was it, I was on cloud nine at the end of the interview. You know, um, we'd uh, we emailed a few times in the subsequent weeks. I was hoping to interview her again, maybe after Black Christmas came out. Um, but of course, a few weeks later, she she very tragically passed away, and. So I was I was devastated. Um, so you know, lo- looking back on the whole experience, I I think on the one hand, my God, how sad it was, how tragic it was. Um, you know, she was so loved and admired, and she was taken from us far too soon. Um, mm. But I also feel just extraordinarily fortunate to have been able to make that connection. Um, and again, you know, thank thank goodness that that that. Doug prompted me to do it when I did because you know you, you don't think about that sort of thing but I would not you know at, at that point the after that the opportunity would have been gone if we'd waited any longer yeah. um so and for the record I do remember the love bug you do remember the, the, yeah, the <laughs> I do remember the love the bug I don't spot. remember I don't remember the yeah, 1997 Br- Bruce Campbell yeah yeah Mr Mr Briscoe County Jr himself 3 years after Briscoe County ended this is what he ended up with this is, this is what he ended up with the, the film is is not well loved or well remembered uh but my goodness does it have a fantastic score by by Shirley Walker so and it was right then in 90 so yeah at the peak of her batman and you know uh, superman powers there so yeah i'm pretty sure Herbie fully loaded is more hated than the love bug. Well, I mean, no one remembers the, 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 the TV remake. That's, that's, it, I don't think enough people know it to, to hate it. I, I, <laughs> I think I don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a bad film. I think it's a, you know, inf- inoffensive, you know, entertaining TV movie. Um, yeah. But it just, you know, I don't, I'm not even sure it's ever even been out on home video. There might've been a VHS release, but anyway, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's the, the the joy and the frustration of this hobby um, is discovering all these obscure th- gems, and then the frustration, of course, is then not having soundtracks of them. So, yeah. <laughs> well, with La La Land and other companies like Entrada, you know, these companies Quartet. are putting out amazing, yeah, huh? Quartet, you know, out in Spain, Quartet. is doing some great stuff. Yeah, I mean, amazing stuff. I mean, just the like every week that La La Land sends me a, a newsletter, you know, an email newsletter. It's like, Ooh, I need to contact Ooh, I need to contact Matt. It's like every, every single week is like, I want this, 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 and this, and this. Cause I've, I've been reviewing for them for over oh, this Christmas. will be a year. I think, um, well, it'll be a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, but like my, the, <laughs> the biggest thing I reviewed from them, I never thought that they'd, they'd send me one. Lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and people can listen to me and uh, Neil S. Bulk uh, talk all kinds of rigs and Murtaugh over on Neil's. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Michael Kamen. One of, oh, talk about another great, great composer, great musician. Oh, absolutely. You know, my, Michael Kamen had, had uh, he, um, he had a sensibility that, that, just was was unlike any anyone else um i i think probably my favorite cayman score is um is brazil mm-hmm. which again it's just one of those uh, one of my favorite films and uh and one of my favorite uh uh musical accompaniments you know it's almost more than a score it's got all the songs weaving in and all that and and uh yeah he he's another another incredibly talented individual who uh, who left us too soon yeah, I had no idea at the time. Like when I, when I was doing research for for Neil's interview, no idea he also did the Die Hard movies. I knew he did Lethal Weapon, but I had no clue that he did the Die Hard movies. Yeah, as well. well, he was very ch- chameleon. You know, he could do um, he because uh, they don't sound anything alike. That's the thing. Oh. You, you, they're they're both uh, they're both they're absolutely their own thing. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Takis. Uh, that has been the GCRN latest uh, uh, interview, I should say. Um, episode 75 of Geek Key... Uh, 
I can't talk. Episode 75 of GeekCast Radio, the po- our podcast here, a flagship show, will actually be our year in review episode coming up on New Year's Eve this year. In between that, I'm hoping to get some more interviews with other people and put them on the feed. But um, yeah, we at GCRN have a lot to celebrate since this is our five-year anniversary this year. June 1st, 2009. Oh boy, long time. <laughs> so thank you again, John. Unleash the geek in you and we will catch you next time. Thank you very much. he can still draw a breath. None of my teammates will. Me? I've got a different problem. I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard, always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone, never allowing myself to lose control, even for a moment, or someone could die. You can take it, can't you, big man? What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. You've just listened to GeekCast Radio on the GeekCast Radio Network. There are several ways to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show. First, visit the website, geekcastradio.com, where you can comment on all of our different podcasts. Second, you can rate our show and leave us feedback in iTunes. Third, follow us on Twitter at Geekcast Radio. Fourth, become a fan on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash geekcastradio. Call the voicemail line, 502-526-5821. Please remember to tell us the show you are leaving the message for and your name. So until next time, unleash the geek in you.